हेलो फ्रेंड्स मंदार हियर आई एम बैक विथ नदर वीडियो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अमेरिका कम्पीट्स एक्ट ऑफ 2022 ट्वेंटी दैट वॉज पास्ट इन द सेनेट इन अ डिफरेंट वर्जन लास्ट ईयर बट इज गोइंग टू बी कंसिडर्ड इन द हाउस दिस वीक और दिस मंथ आई एम ऑल्सो गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन एंड लेफ्ट ओवर क्वेश्चन फ्राम फ्रॉम द यू एस सी यू एस सी एस पॉलिसी अलर्ट दैट केम इन टू वीक्स बैक स्पेसिफिकली अबाउट हंड्रेड एंड एटी डेज ऑफ क्लॉक रीसेट एंड ऑल्सो अबाउट whether or not you get a receipt when you do the enter file so these are very important updates so don't miss them and watch this video until the end and let's get started If you are here for the first time welcome my name is Mandar and I make immigration related videos for US and Canada I'm not an immigration lawyer so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only and for your specific immigration needs before you take any action you should hire a competent immigration lawyer now before we get into HR 4521 America Competes Act of 2022 I want to cover three questions or three important topics first is the FY 2023 H1B cap uh, cap subject registration will open on 1st of March so USCIS has provided a news alert that this process is going to become uh, available starting March 1st so let's look at it so this this is the actual news alert from USCIS saying FY 2023 F1B cap initial registration period opens on March 1st USCIS and uh, announced that the initial registration period for the fiscal year of 2023 will open at the noon eastern on March 1st and run through noon eastern of March 18 so it, there are 18 days for you to apply for your um, uh, H1B uh, cap petition During this period the prospective petitioners and representatives will be able to complete and submit their registrations using online H1B registration system. Now there is a, the process has not changed it is also a two step process where uh, anybody who is petitioning you will pay a $10 fee with the basic information then that will go through a lottery system to give you an update on whether your application was picked up or selected and then you you will have a certain time frame to submit entire documentation or entire petitioning including all the supporting documentation uh, to you uh, to USCIS for your H1B and then final decision will be made subject to the review of those documentation so i just wanted to kind of remind everybody who is in this uh, process after completing your studies if you are into the process of getting your H1B the period the time period starts on 1st of march for FY 2023 so remember when you get this H1B approved it is not effective until october 1st so uh, even if you apply now you get into the lottery system you you get selected you submit your documents and then the uh, decision is made with, uh, made whether you got an H1B or not if you get the H1B it will in, uh, it will start on october 1st of 2022 so just as a reminder Now the second question I wanted to ask and this was one of the common questions in uh, my emails and on the Patreon site and uh, remember if you have any questions if you want any opinion uh, regarding these upgrades and the downgrade situation or any other question related to US immigration or for that matter Canadian immigration uh, please contact me on the Patreon site because I will be uh, I'll be linking that in my description as well as uh, somewhere here so contact me that is the best way to contact me that will be my personal opinion not a legal advice or give you my perspective what i would do if i were in your shoes now the second question is uh, people are saying that uh, you know the ac21 rules so when you apply for 485 um, there are uh, uh, as long as you have been waiting on your adjustment of status for 180 days starting the date of the receipt number uh, when you applied for i485 once you have waited for 180 days then you can avail ac21 rule to change your job so basically uh, job portability now uh, the question is if you do the inter filing say for instance you are in eb3 category after you downgraded somewhere last year or two years back you are in eb3 process and now with the uscis alert you want to upgrade your petition to eb2 uh, so with the upgrade through this inter file does your i uh, does your uh, 180 date clock uh, reset 
Now there is some clear text around this from the USCIS that yes, the clock actually resets. Once you refile, your clock for 180 days reset. So when you do an interfile, you, you, you have to stay in that process for another 180 days before you can consider changing your job if you want to change your job using AC21. So that was the clarification that I wanted to make. And then the third one was, um, this was uh, going back and forth. Some people said that uh, even after the interfiling with this uh, USCIS alert of uh, having a lot of visa numbers available for EB2, you do get a receipt notice. Now be very clear and read the instructions. You do not get a receipt notice for the interfile itself. What you do get the receipt notice is for supplement J. There are specific uh, clauses in that in that alert and I have read it out in my last video so I will not do it again but you will uh, in some situations you will need to file supplement supplement J and you will only get a receipt number for supplement J and that is a normal process even if even otherwise in your uh, usual process when you su submit a supplement J you do get a receipt number but specifically for interfile you do not get uh, any receipt number and USCIS has clearly told that now so a lot of people were arguing with me that they do get the receipt number which is not the case so I just wanted to clarify that now let's look into America competes act of 2022 so now this is a, a act that was passed in the Senate for a version uh, to allow for competitiveness with especially with the countries like China and Taiwan and so on and so forth uh, especially the, one of the uh, one of the key features of this act is um, subsidizing about 52 billion dollars of subsidies for US companies to uh, do the chip production here in the United States so as you know with the global um, uh, supply chain shortage the, the there is a chip chip means the the processor brain behind a lot of things that you and uh, you and I use uh, basically mobile phones or cars or refrigerator or uh, there are a lot of devices that use a chip and a lot of these chips are manufactured in uh, China or Taiwan or other South Asian countries and uh, mostly they are not manufactured here. So there is a competitive disadvantage. So to fill that gap, uh, this America's Compete Act, America Competes Act of 2022 has a clause in there to, uh, to kind of uh, fulfill that gap to produce these microchips over here instead of having to import them from these countries. My focus is mainly on the immigration clauses uh, that are within these House bill. House Democrats unveiled a legislative package called America Competes Act of 2022 that was passed uh, that is a version that was passed in the Senate uh, which was US Innovation and Competi Competition Act US ICA Act that was uh, passed in the Senate in the last June now uh, there is also immigration provision for uh, within this act the Competes Act proposes to provide STEM doctoral graduates with a fast track to receive employment based visa now uh, this competes act will also create an entirely new visa category which is called a w category now let's look at actual text where this uh, where this bill is so this is this is the rules committee print uh, 11731 this is hr 4521 america competes act and if we look at the section here here is the immigration section title 3 immigration provisions uh, section 80301 W visas, as I said, this is a new category of visa that they are going to do uh, startup entities uh, and, and let's go and look at uh, what that uh, what these sections mean. Now, here is the section where it, where it starts telling about the W visas. They are going to modify the section in the INA to create a new classification of W non-immigrant visas. These, uh, these are three types of visa, W1, W2 and W3. W1 is entrepreneur with an ownership interest in a startup entity. So basically if you have an ownership interest in the startup entity in the US, you can get a W1 visa. Essential, uh, W2 is essential employees of a startup uh, entity. So if you are uh, part of a uh, startup and categorized as essential employee, you could get a W2 visa. And W3 is the spouses and children of W1 and W2 non-immigrants. Uh, there, are, there are certain provisions of what, what this W visa, who qualifies for this W visa. So it will be given for three years at a time and uh, it will be extended by another three years and another year 
uh, so up to seven years uh, if I am not mistaken and then uh, there are certain clauses that the alien possesses an ownership interest uh, of not less than 10% in a startup entity the alien will play a central active role in the management of the startup alien possesses the knowledge skills and experience to substantially assist the startup entity with the growth and success of his business uh, during the 18 month period pre uh, preceding the filing of the petition the startup entity received at least $250,000 in qualifying investment from one or more qualified investors so those are the kind of conditions you have to meet in order to get this w1 visa now there is a three year extension eligibility and additional extension of one year increments uh, and another provision in here is that this visa is going to be dual intent so if you come on this startup visa w1 w2 uh, you you can also apply for your green card now another section I wanted to point out is uh, section 80303 which is doctoral STEM graduate. So in this section what they have said is they are going to if you are in the STEM uh, category and if you have a doctorate uh, which is PhD from one of those uh, American universities you will be exempt from the visa numerical limits. So let's read what this section is all about. In general it makes an amendment to INA to exempt from the numerical limitations on immigrant visas aliens who meet the requirement for classification as an immigrant under the employment based first preference category so basically if you if you meet the eb1 criteria and if you um, are from the stem graduate you will be able to apply in this eb1 category with no numerical limit so basically there will be an immediate visa number available for you uh, although your entire eb1 category is current uh, at the moment uh, beyond that there won't be any numerical limit for this particular uh, candidate so this is really game changing for doctoral stem graduates so if you are a phd student uh, and if you are in the uh, your phd is in stem uh, which is science technology engineering and mathematics then you will be eligible for an employment based green card with no uh, numerical limit so there will be all there will always be and, and a visa number available for you now where does it stand so remember there was a version of this bill that was passed in the senate last year in june now the there is a this the, the one that we saw is a different version of this bill that is brought to the uh, the house floor now because this is a different bill and which will get passed by the way because uh, democrats have majority in the house at the moment so they will not necessarily need any uh, republican votes to pass this bill in the house but what will happen is they will uh, need because this bill is significantly different from the one that was passed in the senate it has to go back to a senate committee where they have to negotiate the differences between uh, between the senate version and the uh, and the house version and they have to come up to, uh, to an agreement uh, and then it has to be passed in the senate and the house again so it has it has few hoops to pass through whether or not these immigration uh, conditions are challenged uh, by senators because the senate version of the bill did not have the immigration clauses in it so the, uh, that was the difference so uh, so once now uh, if this bill gets passed in the house it has to go to the go back to the committee for the negotiations for those differential um, elements in this bill now there are a few poison pills that uh, the republicans do not want in this bill uh, that the demo, uh, that the house version has so this is going to be a little bit of a ping pong between the house and the senate and there are going to be negotiations but i think this bill has a very good chance of passing so it is a very good news for uh, all those doctoral candidates in this to get a green card um, uh, without any numerical limit so I thought this would be interesting topic to a lot of people who are studying in the United States. If you have any other questions, if and when this bill passes, we'll, I'll make another video to go into the details of oh, what are the conditions and what are the clauses uh, for the eligibility of this particular uh, visa type, the W2, W1, W2 visa type, and also uh, this clause uh, where you don't have a numerical limit for the eligibility in the green card. So really that's all I wanted to say in this video. If you like the content of this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.